Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we are going to solve for these two questions, and I got them from Brilliant Work from their AMC course. So if you want to see more interesting challenging math questions, just like these two, be sure you guys go check them out. I will have the link in the description for you. All right, for the first one, we're going to solve for x times y from this system of equations, and for the second one, we are going to solve for a, b, and c individually from this right here. And as always, please pause the video and try them first. Okay, hopefully you guys all have a chance to try it. And now let me tell you guys the answers. For the first one, again, we just want x times y, and the answer to that is 12. And for the second one here, we want a, b, c individually, and let me tell you guys that the answer for a is 1 third. The answer for b is negative 1, and the answer for c is equal to 1 over 4. Alright, so this right here are the answer right here. Last time, in my extreme algebra question, <laughs> we didn't solve for a, b, and c individually, right? But this time, we did it, okay? And now I will show you guys how to approach them. The idea is that you are not going to solve for them in the usual sense. Like for example right here, it's not a good idea to isolate the y from this equation and then plug in that expression into the y's here. Don't do that. Otherwise, the equation will get pretty crazy. We have to think about what are the other ways, the creative ways that we can do to solve for what we are trying to do. Okay, for the first one, keep in mind our goal is to get x times y, that quantity. We do see the x times y, x times y here, huh? Huh, <sighs> that's kind of bad. Because if I subtract them, they will be gone right away, huh? Okay, but I do notice we have the x squared and the y squared. First thing first, keep in mind, we can work with equations, we can add them up, we can subtract them, right? Let me just see what happens if we add them up. And for simplicity purpose, I will label this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. Let's go ahead and do 1 plus 2. And the answer to that is not 3. The answer to that is, well, x squared. And this plus that, we have two of them. So we have to add 2xy, and we have to add the y squared. So here will be the entire left-hand side. And of course, on the right-hand side, 20 plus 30 is 50. And now, you see, this is pretty nice because we can factor it. And this is, of course, x plus y squared equals 50. I wish that was the question, that's it. Or maybe somebody can tell me what x squared plus y squared is. Because if I know that, I can just substitute that value for x squared plus y squared, and then we will be able to solve for x times y. But we don't have that at the moment. This is what we have. All right, now, this is just one example, like one way to work with equations. We'll have x plus y squared. But, you see, we add the equations. Maybe let's try to subtract the equations. Although, the x, y, x, y will be gone, but we will end up with x squared minus y squared. That's actually a pretty nice expression. And let's see what we can do from there, right? So again, right here, let's go ahead and do 1 minus 2. And the answer to this is not negative 1. <laughs> the answer to this is equal to x squared. This and that, you know, they cancel each other out. So we just have minus y squared, and that's equal to 20 minus 30, which is negative 10. That's great. And now we'll see that this right here is factorable. Mary nicely, we get x minus y times x plus y equals negative 10. So that's pretty good. Again, seriously, I wish this was like x squared plus y squared, but it was not. Okay, so we factor it. Hmm. Let's see how we can make the connection between this and that. Again, you see, this right here is x plus y squared. We only have x plus y here. In order for us to use this, wouldn't it be nice if we just square both sides so that I can produce the x plus y squared? And let's see what happens from there. When we square both sides, we will get this right here being x minus y squared. And this right here is just x plus y squared. And that will be 50 in a second. But let me write it down the right-hand side for you guys. Negative 10 squared is equal to positive 100. And now, let me put a 50 right here for the x plus y squared. So we get x minus y squared times 50 equals 
100. And of course, we can divide the 50 on both sides, and we get a very similar expression, namely x minus y squared being equal to just a 2 right here. This and that are very similar, huh? And now notice, if you expand this, you get that. And what happens if you expand this right here? We will get x squared minus 2xy plus x, I mean plus y squared. And right here, I'm just expand the left hand side. The 2 is still the 2 on the right hand side. So we have the 2 like that. Now, take a look of the equations that we have. Let me just label this right here. You see? I will just call this being equation 3, and I will call this right here being equation 4. Now, both of them have the x squared plus y squared. If I just subtract this and that, right? This minus that. I will get 2xy minus negative 2xy. So we can get an xy, huh? That's very nice, and that's exactly what we'll do right here. Let's go ahead and make that happen. So we will do 3 minus 4, right? Equation 3 minus equation 4. Again, the answer to this is not negative 1. We will actually end up x squared minus this will be gone. 2xy minus negative 2xy, we get positive 4xy, and then y squared minus y squared is gone. And 50 minus 2 is 48. So, 4xy is equal to 48. Of course, this needs no introduction. xy is equal to 12. And with that, we are done. Okay? So, that's right here, the answer. Right? That's it. Now, we are going to just work out the other one. Right here. Huh. We have three unknowns, A, B, C, and three equations. That's fair enough, huh? Let's see, let's see, let's see. We're going to solve for A, B, and C individually. Notice that the equations right here, though, they are kind of similar because you have A plus B, and then right here, you have 2AB. B plus C, and you have the 3ABC. And then C plus A, you have the 7CA. Hmm... Maybe we can try to add the uh, equations up together again. But if we add the equations, the left-hand side, yes, we can combine the terms like 2a, 2b, 2c. But the right-hand side, we cannot do a thing, huh? It's just a bunch of this a, b, c, d, whatever. There's no d, by the way. So perhaps it's actually a good idea to just clean up the variables. Let's go ahead and just keep all the variables on one side. What I mean by that is, maybe from the e first equation, let's go ahead and divide everybody right here by AB. Because when we do that, A divided by AB, we get 1 over B. So let me just write this down right here for you guys. Again, this divided by that will get 1 over B. And then we add, this divided by that is 1 over A. And that will be equal to just 2, right? AB, AB cancel. And now, this looks much more cleaner, right? That's pretty good. Let's do the same thing for the other ones. I will just go ahead and put this right here, divided by BC, and divide this by CA. The second equation will give us 1 over C plus 1 over B equals 3. And then the third equation is going to give us 1 over A plus 1 over C equals 7. So, this is pretty nice. And now, we are going to add these up in a nice way because the right hand side is just 2 plus 3 plus 7 which is just 12. That's very nice. The left hand side though, we have 2 of this, so that's 2 over A plus 2 of these which is 2 over B and then again 2 of these, so we have 2 over C. These together we get past the 12. And now, can we just divide everybody by 2? Sure, why not? And we get 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C equals 6. And this is very nice. What's better is that if you look at this equation, we have 1 over A plus 1 over B being equal to 2. So I can just put in this 2 right here. And we can get an equation with just a C being involved. And we can solve a C from there. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So. Let's utilize the first information here. Again, this right here will give us 2 plus 1 over C equals 6. 
And now let's do this in our head. Minus 2 on both sides, we get 1 over c equals 4, and then take the reciprocal, so from here we get c equals 1 over 4. And that's the first answer that we have right here. Secondly, well, we have 1 over c plus 1 over b equals 3. Congratulations, we do have the 1 over b plus 1 over c, right? Just this direction, it's okay. So we can plug in the 3 right here. In another word, we get 1 over a plus this right here is just a nice number 3. And this is going to give us the 6 right here. So it's the same style now. And again, minus 3 on both sides, 1 over a is equal to 3, and take the reciprocal on both sides, so we get a equals 1 over 3. And lastly, let's find out what b is. Of course, 1 over a plus 1 over c equals 7, and we see that 1 over a plus 1 over c equals 7. So with that said, I will just put this down, 7, right? This is a 7 because of this plus that. And we still have the 1 over b, and this is equal to 6. Minus 7 on both sides, 1 over b is equal to negative 1. Take the reciprocal, we still end up with negative 1. Therefore, b is equal to negative 1. And congratulations, we have our answers right here. Whew, so much fun. As you can see, these questions, they really force us to think. Okay, so hopefully you guys all like those two algebra questions, and now let me show you guys what else can we get from brilliant work, especially from their daily challenges. And earlier I showed you guys two questions in algebra, and now I'll show you guys a question in geometry. So, can we make a perfect shot? And you can check out this little animation. Have you ever tried this when you play pool? <laughs> Leave a comment down below and let me know. But anyway, here is the question right here for today. Alright, starting from this corner here at this angle, we would like to know, if this is isosceles triangle, how can we aim to the hypotenuse so that after one bounce, the ball will hit the middle of this side right here? And of course, you have some choices right here for you guys to think about. I think it's really, really interesting. And if you would like to know more and find out more, be sure you come here, and you guys can sign up for a free account so you can keep track of your progress. And if you want more, you guys can go to courses, and you can use the link brain.work slash blackpenredpen. That way you can get 20% of discount and you can get the access to all of these courses. Notice that this is the AMC course. So hopefully you guys all like this video. If you have other ways to do this, be sure you leave a comment down below and let us know how to solve that. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to my channel, hopefully you can subscribe. Thank you so much. And as always, that's it.